All right, okay, let's get started. the last day hey everybody um yeah super weird uh it's been a crazy week but this is the last day of offset which is uh very bittersweet and very exciting um and also very sad so we'll see um but we've got a really great show for you today both now and a little bit later um for those of you that are tuning in for the very first time hello and welcome my name is ryan selvi i'm a motion designer uh, live streamer that streams on Behance on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays on my own channel, uh, Behance.net slash Ryan Selvi. Um, and normally we work on graphic design and motion design and illustration and all things art. But this week I have had the privilege of taking over Adobe Live because the Adobe Live team has been on vacation. Um, and so I had the opportunity to take over their channel, get the keys to the kingdom, and bring on some of the coolest people around the internet to come on and talk about their process and talk about their work. And it's been really fun. So if you have some time to kill this weekend or you have some time to kill tomorrow because tomorrow Adobe is actually off. So all the broadcast tomorrow will be replays. Um, so if you're looking at replays anyway, you should check out all the replays from this week. Um, we've had Annika Garwal. Um, we had Swoop Nebula. We had Pink Pony Creative. We had a lot of different featurettes about uh, 36 Days of Type, which was really cool. Um, we had my old roommate, Zachary Bromberg, on, uh, Anna Davis Court, and Ursula Prince. And so that's got photography, that's got video editing, that has illustration. We have something for everyone. Um, and it's been a really fun experience. We've been experimenting with the formula of how the show works with different segments. And um, I, I've just really, I've really had a great time. And I hope you guys have had a really great time too. We still have a whole day ahead of us. Um, but I see a lot of you in the chat uh, from previous days. So I'm really excited to see you guys. And um, welcome back to Annika, to Bruce, to Umicorn. Thank you, Sam, for being here and moderating. Sam Peterson is our moderator for the day. And um, Sam Peterson is a fantastic illustrator. He's also a streamer, streams on Behance, streams on Twitch, excuse me. <coughs> got a little too excited just started like talking and forgot to breathe um also there's a bunch of you over on youtube as well it's great to see you guys over on youtube um uh most of the chatting will be taking place over on behance um so just uh if you want to talk and chat make sure you click that link that sam is posting in the youtube chat and um then we can have a great time over on Behance. But I do see you, uh, Yasmin and House Fanatic, uh, Steph. I see you guys over on YouTube. Just pop on over to Behance, and then um, we can have all the uh, chat located in one place. Um, but yeah, today we're going to be having Jamie Brindle on. I'm a big fan. He is a uh, social media genius uh, and also a, um, a building business genius where he gives out tips and tricks and advice um to all of us freelancers that are out there just trying to navigate and figure out um you know what what it means to freelance how to tackle some of the most common issues and um really end up making a, a scalable venture out of um creating your own business so it's been really cool to be able to talk with him and um we're bringing him in in uh just a little bit but uh i already no, i already see that um House Fanatic said, Jamie's the man. Helped me get started. First six months freelancing financial analysis. 15000 so far. I mean, that's that's fantastic. Got to celebrate the wins. Um, we're all here about positivity. Um, and it's uh, it's always great to see. Um, but uh, yeah, no, if you guys have any questions for Jamie as we go through, um, or and you have any comments, or if you've already experienced something good, um, please let us know. Also, if you have any of your own advice and your own tips, um, please, uh, you know, feel free to, to shout them out in the chat. If you're thinking about getting into freelance and you're not quite sure yet um, or anything else, just say the word. Um, so like I said, we have a big thing planned ahead of us. But before we get into it, um, I do want to just take some time to talk about the schedule. We have um, the schedule for today. Once again, 
Uh, Kyle T. Webster was this morning, and Caterino Torridos was also this morning. Uh, we have Jamie Brindle today uh, until 1130. Um, and then we have Rachel Ashley um, for the time. Uh, <laughs> everyone's commenting about the cat. Sorry. I actually, I just got this cat. My boyfriend doesn't know. He's been on vacation for um, like four or five days, and he is actually getting home like right now. And so right after stream, uh, he's going to walk into a new cat. So we're going to see how that goes. And I will let you guys all know how that is. <laughs> um, but, you yeah, know, I'm also kind of trying to come up with a name. So if you guys have a um, any name suggestions, um, would love would love it. He's a boy. I was trying to think of something maybe like kind of motion graphics related. Thought Kodak would be cool. Kodak would be cool. Um, Vector, I thought was kind of a cool sounding name, but um, I think that it was more of a, it's more of a mouthful. Right now I've been using Roscoe a lot, which isn't anything motion graphics, but um, if you guys have any suggestions, please let me know. I'm sure the conversation will start. Uh, Sean says Pixel. Pixel is, uh, is a great name. I like Pixel. It's kind of like Pixie almost. Um, and uh, also Clover said Ryan became a cat lady while Aaron is away. You, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. There's definitely um, some different stuff. Now, before we get started, um, we have been doing a segment every single day. Jamie's more of a video editor. So um, I think it would be kind of cool to actually just do this solo a little bit. Um, I mean, obviously, I love his opinions. But um, let's just check out the letter R first, and then we'll... Um, We'll go from there. This is for the 36 Days of Tight. Today is brought to you by the letter R. 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 Anik said, call him Anchor because he grounds you. That's adorable and so bizarre at the same time. Um, so letter R is uh, just picked by the 36 Days of Tight. They have that schedule. This is not um, an affiliation with 36 Days of Tight. Um, it's made by Trente Seis over, um, I believe, um, where was it? Um, in Barcelona. That was it, Barcelona. And uh, they basically gather a bunch of different um, uh, pieces with the hashtag throughout the um throughout the process they give out the month's worth of stuff and they um then uh just highlight stuff so i've been using that hashtag to find this stuff and then we've also been going along with the, the letters that go along with their um their corresponding days but um i just want to go ahead and we can pull up uh r as the cat hops back onto me i'm sorry everybody um and the first one is actually the one that they they posted last night um and it's by risa pardini and um, I think it has a lot of really cool motion. But the thing that really stuck out to me is that the outsides of it feel very, very pointy, uh, whereas the inside feels very, very soft. But then if you kind of like analyze your um, your perception of it, you can see that like they're still using the same curves from the outside and the inside. And so you would think that it would be kind of pointy on both sides. But for whatever reason, it feels it feels soft on the inside. Um, and I think it's cool. Um, but you know, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's bold. It takes up the whole space and, uh, I, I want to check out some more of the alphabet. Um, this is one of the ones that I want to talk about real quick, um, is Raul, uh, Paul Twa, and he's created these ones that, um, are based off of all different like painters and famous artists. And the ones that he made today was for the Czech painter, uh, Alphonse Mucha, which you guys probably recognize the, the work of these like beautiful goddesses. Um, and uh, oh, is it clever to say he can be Keith for uh, kitty kitty keyframe? That's really cute. Um, and uh, I when, when I found this this most recent one, I was really excited about it because I could tell that it was like based off of something. Um, and then as I kind of looked into the description, I, I noticed that then when I pulled up his profile, he had all these different um, these different references of all these different painters, and each day he's picking a different thing to um explore which is uh really cute and um informative i mean you guys should check him out um he is paul twa on instagram and um yeah no it's uh it's cool to see all the different approaches to all the different letters as they uh as they come across and you know naturally everyone is 
working at their own pace. Some people are doing it every single day. Other people are uploading in bulk. So if you guys know of someone who's doing 36 days of type, please let me know. Um, and we can also uh, take a look at that. So we're going to take a break from um, the 36 days of type because it looks like we got Jamie. So Jamie, um, uh, like I said, is a very experienced freelancer. He um, has created his own business, uh, both for um, creating uh, like a studio, but he is predominantly known online for his uh, business in his side hustle that became a very big side hustle. Um, and he uh, is the Jamie Brindle on um, Instagram and TikTok. You probably have seen some of his stuff, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to bring him in. So without further ado, if you guys could please give a very warm welcome to Jamie. Hey, Jamie. Hey, how you doing? I'm doing great. You, it looks like you figured out how to flip your camera somehow. I did. I did. That was the, the cause of the mayhem this morning. But, uh, you know, success, success, victory. Yeah, it is. Going, you, man? you stay up all, all night trying to figure it out and then uh, you finally yeah. got it to work. I tell you what, it's funny. It, I, I'm, a, I'm a millennial. I'm 32 years old. And uh, I, I recently got into this whole Instagram and TikTok thing. Uh, and I... Um, just in the last month, the amount of times talking to folks on TikTok uh, and and learning that I'm considered, you know, an old guy now. I'm like the, you know, the 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 cool uncle is is how I've been described, which is a, a first for me. And and <laughs> it definitely is feeling that way. Though all of a sudden, I'm like, man, I I am kind of like a little a, a little behind on on the technology now. <laughs> no, it's weird. It's like you have to make such a effort now to remain relevant and up to the time of technology was, you know, like 10, 15 years ago for us, we just kind of naturally fell into the the funnels that were the relevant technology. So it's it's a weird adjustment. Um, it's moving so quick. I just now. hope we're not like our parents where, you know, they, they really struggle with even just using the software and the uh, services. I, I always want to stay at, at least a step above that. It'll happen. It'll happen. Yeah. I know. That's yeah. sad. Yeah. Yeah. When I go to make like a TikTok reel or anything like that, I, 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 I even struggle. Like I haven't touched TikTok too much. I've done reels obviously because stories kind of, you know, <clears throat> overlap very well, but yeah. um, I, I, I have not gone into as uh, Randall says the clock app because it's TikTok. So well, we have a lot TikTok. of people saying hello um, in the chat. Uh, we got Anna, everybody, Jay, Mike, Asherful, Oliver, Rob. Um, and also, uh, there's some people over on YouTube saying hello as well. If you guys are over on YouTube, make sure you hop on over, uh, to Behance. So the first thing I want to kind of get out of the way, um, is I would love to just hear an introduction as to, um, you know, your self promo, your elevator pitch as to kind of how you identify as an artist and as a person. And, uh, we can go from there. Certainly. Yeah. My name's Jamie Brindle. Uh, I've been freelancing for about 15 years now, a little longer. Uh, I started when I was 17 years old uh, in my, my hometown in Virginia. I you know, bought a camera and would go door to door uh, pitching commercials to local businesses. Uh, and I'd, I, would, I would film a commercial for them and then I'd go to the local a ABC or CBS and negotiate the airtime because uh, that's what you did with digital video back then. There was no Facebook ads. There wasn't, a, and nobody was running programmatic, you know, ads or pre-rolls on YouTube. Uh, you know, so we were putting uh, our our stuff on the the local uh, TV. Uh, flash forward after college, I lasted about three months at a a, a desk job, and uh, it just wasn't for me. So I packed up my stuff and drove across the country to LA, where where I've been ever since. Uh, and my my wife and I now run the business together. Uh, we do a lot of production, a lot of animation. Um, you know, we've worked with clients like Hulu, Netflix, Lionsgate, Google, Disney, uh, you know, and, uh, Hillshire, Plaid, you, you name it, you know, and then a lot Just of a brands few of the that, small companies. Yeah. But then I, well, I want to <laughs> caveat that with a lot of the brands that nobody's ever heard of too. You know, it's, it's, you kind of, you name drop to, cause that's the quickest way to, you know, to, to convey the information that, uh, I've, I've been around the block, but you know, there's, there's plenty of, uh, uh, great companies in between those that we've worked with. And oftentimes, you know, it's the, the concrete logistics and shipping company, uh, that spends way more money than Netflix did on a project, you know, it's the, that you've never heard of. So, 
um, you know, we do a lot of B2B work uh, in, in that vein. But uh, in the last just year and a half, uh, we started a uh, Instagram and a TikTok uh, to try and kind of pass some of the lessons we've learned in the last 15 years on to folks who are, you know, uh, maybe just starting freelance journey or, you know, kind of a, in the middle of it and, and, and want to, you know, think about some things differently or, or want to, you know, a refresher course uh, on, on some tactics. But uh, that Instagram channel, uh, there's a period in, in the summer where it grew from like a thousand followers to a hundred thousand followers in five weeks. Um, wow. Yeah. Remarkable. And so now we're, and today, uh, you know, we're probably going to hit uh, 300,000 uh, in the aggregate between Instagram and TikTok. Uh, wow. Congratulations. That's, that's fantastic. You can, uh, Thank you. Can you. I, I mean, it's, weekend. it's, it's exciting, but it's, you know, the, I, I don't think it's anything special I'm doing. I just think that we've tapped into that zeitgeist that, you know, pe people are, you have all been bitten by the work from home bug because of COVID yeah. uh, and, and, and want to kind of uh, see if there's a way to make this work. So it's an exciting, yeah, time a little bit of a perfect storm. I mean, obviously not perfect storm in the sense that like no one wants a pandemic, but a perfect storm in the sense of for business and um, your, you always talk about finding a niche. Um, yeah. I think this really works uh, in your favor is nice uh yeah. that said though um since we are talking uh, heavily about your work uh we should jump into our first segment which is let's look at your work let's look at your work So um, I, I already saw that Annika said, do we have a confetti motion graphic? We don't. I wish we did. Um, on my own channel, we have like claps and stuff. So I would give you claps <laughs> for 300,000. But unfortunately, we don't have that. I did take the time real quick to just put a very small uh, highlight reel of yours together. Um, that would be a good kind of um, explainer of what you do. I just picked a few of your higher ones. So um, hopefully you like these ones. <laughs> we shall see. <laughs> you do me um, proud. I know it. But here we go. I quoted way too little for this project. If it's really not enough to get the job done, let them know as soon as possible and come with solutions. Like what? Just say as we're getting into this, it's a little more involved than initially discussed, and we're going to have to rethink budget. If that's not an option, I have some ideas on how we can pare down our deliverable and still hit our target. OK, hopefully that works, because can we change just one more thing? Sure. Uh, just a heads up, we're past the revisions included in this quote, so we're in overage territory now. OK, I think this will be the last one then. Oh, actually, I'm getting so much work, it's almost more than I can handle. Raise your rate, 30 to 50%. OK, but now I'm losing a lot of clients. Mm-hmm, I'm still making the same profit, and I have time to do better work. Now you're getting it. And I'm getting a ton of referrals at this new rate. That's awesome. And I can get this to you in four days. Mm. Say six days. I really think I can do it in four. That's great. Say six, turn it in in four, look awesome. I'm able to get started on this tomorrow. And they always set it up, they always set up so that they go into a perfect loop of like this endless conversation of advice, which is always exciting. Um, it's really fun when you can make the loop actually part of the story. I, I, I yeah. nail that one out of every 25 times, but it's super gratifying on my end. <laughs> yeah, no, it's great when you can't necessarily like identify where that is either. Like I yeah. can like I'll watch it twice sometimes and then I'll try to like be like, OK, wait, where is the cut? And also you can <laughs> tell sometimes that in your cut you have made the the final part of the video like the one video is is a continuation. So it's a singular loop. It's, I, I, I'm not describing it properly, but but your video of the loop isn't like you don't end the video and then loop it. It's like cut yeah. in the middle so in that the middle it of a clip. perfectly loops. What you're saying is I'm the Chris Nolan of TikTok. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Hey, that's exactly <laughs> what I'm saying. I thought that just went with, you know, without even saying so we're good. Um, but yeah, obviously, um, you have kind of mastered this idea of these two personalities. Um, <laughs> congratulations, little Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, but one is just really good at freelance. Um, where did the idea of kind of talking to yourself come from? I, you know, um, my wife, I, I'll give you the philosophical and like the, the real answer. <laughs> you know, so like philosophically, my, you know, my target audience, I've always said from the beginning, and this has made it super easy to make content is me 10 years ago 
right? I remember yeah. fondly sitting in my uh, uh, studio apartment in Hollywood at the time, uh, in, and I turned my closet into an office. So I had like like printouts of like quotes from Tom Brady and Dwayne the Rock Johnson and you know Marcus Aurelius taped up to the wall in my closet, and I just remember thinking, uh, you know, why is this so? like how how come why can't anybody just tell me what to do you know why is this so difficult why is there i feel and particularly in in hollywood in the film industry um it feels like we're all just kind of lapping like a a, a walled city and anytime somebody finds a crack through the wall they seal it up behind them you know so so mm -hmm. I, I was always you know I, I was lamenting the fact that i didn't have many I had a couple of really great mentors, but there weren't any like instruction manuals. And so that's what this Instagram is, is me talking to, uh, you know, myself from 10 years ago, basically, uh, and, and trying to save uh, that guy from uh, from some heartache. You know, I don't think I can I can save you from all the uh, <laughs> all the all the challenges, but I try and save you from the stupid ones. Um, yeah. No, I mean, even just starting off with that, that first one, which um, I've definitely I mean, I. I can relate to so many of these because I've I've I, uh, quit my full time job um, October 2019, so I was able to Score, yeah. get my footing, um, kind of get things together, buy all the computer and stuff, and then the world shut down like three or four months later, um, which turned out to be the perfect timing. Um, once again, obviously not not reveling in the idea it, of the yeah, pandemic, yeah. but it was really good for business. Suddenly, everyone was freelancing. Um, and uh, your your channel alone um, has really like during that process really made it helpful because I have made some of the big mistakes of like, I didn't budget nearly enough for how much this is going to be. I don't want to sound as much of an amateur as I feel or as I am uh, and being able to kind of see your videos and have that guiding light of being like, OK, this is the way to professionally articulate what I'm going through. Um, and I, and I like that you don't shy away from that. I, I'm glad that you kind of embrace failure and and embrace the idea that that's all part of the process and you're going to have to learn it. You, someone can tell you a thousand times, but for some of it, you're going to have to go through the hardships on your own. You know, that's well, we're, and process is the key word. And I, you know, no matter how far along or at least I haven't found it yet, no matter how far along you are in the journey, you're going to keep failing because that's that's the signifier that you're moving forward. Right. So I early on, I adopted the mentality that failures are the stepping stones to success. I, I almost gamified it like I have to collect so many no's to get to a yes. Um, yeah. But, you know, if, if you're failing, as long as you're learning, as long as you do, you know, a post game and really try to assess what happened. Uh, failures just mean that you're, you're trying new things, which means you're growing. Yeah, I think I, I'm not sure it was on your videos or something uh, if I saw it somewhere else. But it was like you should fail a lot, but try to only fail once per failure. Yep. Um, as I say, it a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Was, yeah it's okay. just like as long as you <laughs> try to try to learn the lesson once, you know, that's right. Uh, yeah. Because a lot of these lessons are, you know, are, are taught in financial blood. So you you <laughs> you want to you want to try and, uh, you know, mitigate the, the financial bleeding as, as best as possible. Now, um, I know you said you've been freelancing for um, uh, you said about 15 years. And yep. uh, with that, if you're comfortable with me asking, um, what would you say? would be one of your biggest blunders? Oh, man. It's just there's so many to pick from. I, uh, the, the, <laughs> <laughs> that's like, it's a, you know, to to this day, you know, we're still, I mean, I we're not making the stupid mistakes, but there are kind of, you know, I could have, I, I should have, you know, like you kind of have the, the hindsight after a project. But um, I think probably one that that stung the most, and I wrote about it in my ebook, was um, when I when I first started, uh, I was, uh, again, living in Hollywood and I was filming conventions, usually in Vegas or Florida, wherever the big convention halls were, Chicago, New York. And um, I was always walking around with a steady cam and a light over one shoulder and a boom pole over the other shoulder. I was like, you know, that picture of Robert Rodriguez when he was making uh, a mariachi. But uh, uh, that always got me some attention. Folks would come up and say, hey, you know, I need this. Can you do this for me? And um, and somebody came up to me and gave me their business card and they, uh, worked at a super major, you know, fortune 500, fortune 100 company. Um, and, uh, and I said, yeah, for sure. Let's set up a call, you know? And, and, uh, I went back and, uh, 
I had written out on these index cards, all the things that I wanted to say on this call. Um, and I get on it, you know, and there's like nine other people on the conference call and the guy goes, okay, Jamie, uh, go. And that's, and, and I proceeded to read off of my stack of index cards. Just that was my, yeah. my safety blanket. I just was reading, 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 uh, you know, and I read for about 15 minutes. It felt like it was probably less, but, uh, and uh, it probably felt like a TED talk. You're like, I have been yeah. talking for two hours now. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and I'm talking about all the features of what we do and all the And like these guys know, all, like this isn't what, you know, they're they're on this call for uh, in retrospect. And uh, I finished my spiel and they said, OK, uh, thanks. We'll be in touch and hung up the phone. Right. And it was mm -hmm. a total, total fumble, like just just a complete mishandling of the situation on my part. And um, and that's why, you know, a lot of the times what I do now when I get that, okay. And I, and I make reels about it too. When you get the client, this is okay, go, you know, let's hear your spiel. You know, just, I, I stop it there immediately. And I say, well, before we get too, too far into this, you know, tell me a little bit more about what your vision for this project is. And, you know, what are we up against here? How are we measuring success? Uh, you know, and that usually that, that redirects the conversation to, into what's important, which is what's on the other side of this project for you. Uh, you know, and I get them talking about that for 20, 30 minutes. And then all of my input after that uh, can be anchored to everything they've just told me that's important to them. Um, so that was my my learning there. But whew, that was painful. That was a rough one. One of the ones that I have definitely learned from you is that listening is probably part of the biggest part of the job. Um, and the idea that like, yes, you are the expert that they are hiring for your expertise, but you can't really fulfill that without giving them the space to talk, um, which I, I think is a, a hard learn. Um, I, <laughs> I was trying to also while you're um, bringing up the idea that that was your biggest blunder. Um, I was thinking about how my blunders have been quite extravagant. I uh, for my old <laughs> agency. I flew out to Des Moines from at the time I was listening, I'm living in Maryland and I flew out and we were there for like half a week, uh, maybe full week, uh, just filming different stuff. And I had it all in the gear and I didn't back it up to my computer and I got back to BWI in Baltimore and I took the bus to my car and I left all of the camera gear, all of the, uh, all of the memory cards and everything on the bus to the back to the car. I drove all the way back to my house and then I realized and I will never forget that for multiple reasons. One, like it was they were like, you have it backed up, right? Like this is thousands of dollars for this week. You you have it backed up, right? And I'm like, no, I don't have it backed up. And two, um, to always keep an eye on your equipment. Thank God I like woke up the next morning and I drove up to BWI and they had it. And I like wanted to like kiss the security person because I was like, wow, you don't huge. realize how much this bag that's is. That's big. I, um, that was that was an unexpected ending to that story. <laughs> yeah, I um, uh, I'll, I'll be quick with this one and not to you know engage in one upsmanship, but uh, I I remember the first and last time that I'll ever film a wedding uh, mm -hmm. was because I you know one of the things that was important to them was getting well wishes from all the guests. Uh, to do like a little montage at the end. And so I would go from table to table at the reception and film, turn on the camera and say, you know, well wishes for the for the bride and groom. They say their well wishes, turn off the camera, I go to the next table, turn on the camera, well wishes for the bride and groom. They'd say their well wishes, turn off the camera, I'd walk to the next table. And I got back to the editing bay and uh, and I got to that section of the footage and it was just a bunch of footage of my feet walking from table no. to table. <laughs> oh, so you got you got those uh, in betweens, rather. Yeah. So you were stopping the recording. I didn't record time. any of it. None of it. Not oh. like yeah, like hundreds of guests. Yeah, nothing. So yeah, hundreds uh, hundreds of footage of feet. It's great. Yeah, <laughs> remember yep. your wedding by my shoe choice. Oh, gosh. <laughs> That's just. So Anyways. what did you end up doing? How did you how did you get yourself out of that? Did you just apologize and say that you didn't? I yeah, I mean that was really early in my career. Uh, I was mm -hmm. still trying to figure out you know, what I, how I could make money with <clears throat> video production. And I, I, I think I just said, cause I felt terrible. I mean, it's, yeah. it's, it's, a, it's a once in a life. It's not like a business, you know, where it's like, ah, you know, rub some dirt in it. You know, it's like, this is yeah. their wedding. So I just said, I, let me just get, I'm just going to give this to you free of charge. And, you know, I think they ended up paying me something, but 
Yeah, was, but I mean, yeah. it's not like you didn't get any of the wedding. I mean, Exa like, exactly. Well, wishes exactly. you can still get. I mean, yeah. I saw a thousand and one um, uh, happy birthday montages during COVID where people filmed themselves. So they could always just do it for an anniversary. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? This, this predated the iPhone, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that's actually um, there. There's two things that I that I want to I want to tackle from what we just talked about. One, um, I do want to highlight uh, Freelancer Year One, which is your book, which we'll hop that on in a second. But two, I also um, love the fact that you are in professional video and that you have experience um, predating the idea of digital uh, distribution and the yeah. idea that you are at the apex of like the forefront of how the medium is changing with TikTok and Instagram. And I know there are so many famous directors and filmographers that are cinematographers that would roll over in the grave hearing me say that, but it really is a whole new generation of the way of approaching media and approaching video and approaching editing. And um, how has it been going from one world to essentially the same world, but a whole new world in the idea that it is, um, I'm sure you, you you approach your TikToks completely different than how you approach um, your full time video things. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> the you know the obnoxious answer is I do and I don't because at the end of the day, it's all it's all the same stuff. It's all storytelling. I mean, not much has changed in storytelling since the caveman days when we were all standing around a fire. You know, um, there's, a, there's a setup and a payoff, and there's uh, you know an obstacle and and uh, and a solution. So I, I think that, uh, you know, the, the, and also the, the, especially nowadays, the key is to grab the attention in the first few seconds. Whereas, yeah. you know, if we're shooting a commercial, that's, that's pretty much the same. I, that's one of the questions I always ask, um, a client, especially if we're doing like a B2B project is, it, is this a captive audience? Who's going to be watching this? Are we trying to hijack attention here or is this a captive audience? Cause it's two different approaches. Um, but you know, most of the time we're hijacking attention and, and that, you know, for, for as far back as I, I mean, like think of, you know, uh, I was just about to almost quote a Scorsese movie there. It's like, as far as I can remember, I always wanted to be a gangster, right? Like, at the, like yeah. first line of the movie, dead body in the trunk slam, you know, Ram Goodfellas title title comes up. Like it's, it's all the same stuff. It's just, it's just a matter of the deployment of it, you know? So yeah, new format. I think not getting too caught up in the, uh, yeah, like you said, not getting too caught up in, in the actual uh, uh, implementation or the, or the, the format and just focusing on the storytelling has been really helpful. Absolutely. Cause uh, it's crazy to think that TikTok and reels, um, are rooted in storytelling, but at the end of the day, like so much of how you build an audience and a following is the idea of continuing the same narrative and being able to see your face and say, okay, I know what this is going to be uh, within the first few milliseconds um, yeah. because just having that connection. Whereas, you know, if you're going to film yourself kind of talking about your day um, that might affect your brand voice and how, uh, I see your other videos. Um, I want to hear about your day. I'm sure it's great, but um, <laughs> uh, it's boring. It's, Front of a it's desk all funny day. that you say it's boring. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, no, I well, the other key caveat to that, or the other key factor to uh, social media, is is just value. Is you know that's what gets you the follow. That's what gets you the the share, uh, and which is the definition of viral content. You know, your content's not going to go viral unless somebody's sharing it to their circle. Um, so, you know, if, if you're bringing the value, um, you know, they'll, they'll want to see more of that, or they'll want to convey that value to their social circle as kind of a social currency. So those, that's a key element of it too. Yeah. Um, social currency, it's such a 2020 term. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, reverb Mike in the chat saying a coworker came back from a three day shoot and every shot was out of focus. That uh, sounds like a nightmare to me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Got to turn on that automatic uh, focus if, if you're not going to be able to see it in the in the preview. Um, but uh, I also, yeah, I wanted to pull up Freelancer Year One. Uh, you can buy it right now on jamiebrindle.io. And it is the practical guide to getting your business off the ground and into profit. And it's only $25, which um, 
is great because it's a full on guide. Um, you kind of dip your toes into a lot of these themes and topics in your TikToks. But why should someone buy uh, this guide? Uh, and who is this for? Who is the target audience? And kind of what does it go through? Yeah, I mean, this is for folks that are <clears throat> just getting started or, uh, you know, I want kind of a back to the basics refresher. Uh, a lot of it has to do, it's pretty industry agnostic. That, that's kind of my objective through all of this stuff. So a lot of it has to do with just, um, you know, building a client base, talking to clients, uh, you know, how to get clients, how to, con how to bring them from lead to a recurring customer um you know and and there's a little bit at the end with kind of the uh, my my two cents on on contracts and billing but uh again like i wanted to keep it pretty that that part of it is kind of general because it's different for everybody in different states and different countries but um yeah it's it's for folks that are that are just getting getting started and uh had fun writing it it's to your point i mean, a lot of this stuff uh, for all of this stuff you can find for free on my on my TikTok and instagram um, you know, it's just, this is a, me curating it and presenting it in a way that's kind of more soup to nuts, you know, uh, start to finish. Um, so, you know, if, if you'd rather just go ingest the free content on the old, on the old Instagram, that's, that's, that's the way to do it as well. No, absolutely. Um, it's, I think it's really admirable the idea that you are putting so much online for free, uh, as a service to just the general public, because, you know, there are a lot of people out there that can't necessarily invest the time. Um, or money uh, into kind of like dipping their toes into freelance, but they kind of still want to see if it's for them. Um, and I think that your TikToks are an introduction that is, can be really accessed by anyone. And then it's always nice to be able to take that to the next level and be able to get a guide and work through and be able to go back and read and highlight. And, you know, I know it's a digital book, but you can still highlight. We're yeah, artists, yeah. You know, so. I, uh, I, there's also an, uh, when you check out it, it offers to add tack onto the book, um, a guide to 50 common client conversations. And, and folks have really, uh, appreciated that because it's basically like a copy and paste, you know, to, to the 50 most common emails you're going to get. And I get a kick out of people, uh, will screenshot their conversations with clients where they've copied and pasted, you know, one of my responses. And it feels like a, uh, you know, it feels like we're building an army. It, it it's really fun, but, uh, yeah, I, if you want to get that, just that, just put the ebook in your cart, uh, add that, and then take the ebook out. That's, <laughs> you know, that's the hack that you can do. It's a little but, uh, swindle around to get it. That's yeah, funny. Yeah. Uh, but no, I mean, email is definitely um, a song and dance to learn. Um, it's something that, you know, uh, like I was saying, it, it's, it's easy to sound like an amateur. It's easy to show your colors of inexperience through. Um, and having yours has been really nice to um, have a groundwork to be able to talk and sound like I know what I'm doing. <laughs> awesome. That's, that's all I want to hear, man. Um, Rob is asking, uh, when you re transitioned from full-time employed, because I know you said you said you worked, what, um, was it three years? Or did you say three months? It was three months, right? Three months. Yeah, I did not three last months. that long. I was, uh, no, let's, let's. Rob's question. I was going to take it. Yeah. Um, and he said he was, what was the biggest challenge in that transition? Difficulties in staying in the known versus jumping into the unknown? So, uh, ironically, because I had started freelancing so early in my life, I was 17 when I started freelancing, uh, the corporate world was the unknown, you know? So, jumping out of it back into freelance was kind of like jumping back into the known for me. Um, I, you know, my boss's boss took me out to dinner. I was working at a, a lobby association in DC. They took me out to dinner and to offer me my own committee, which is kind of a long-term vote of confidence. And, and, uh, when they offered it, I just blurted out, I, I think I'm going to move to LA and make movies. You know, I said, this isn't for me. And right. He kind of, he kind of leaned back and went, that makes sense. All right, cool. Yeah. And then we just talked about that for the rest of the dinner. Uh, and then I was on the road two weeks later, but, um, yeah, I think that the key element for me was the uh, the runway. So I had saved up about seven months, I think, of, of savings uh, to, you know, I was crashing at my buddy's house in Sherman Oaks and um, staying, staying there. And he, uh, I, I think it was around month seven that I got my first decent paying job, you know. Wow. So so that's, that's key is, you know, if you're going to make the jump, give yourself some runway. Um, 
you know, I, I advise that you try and get some clients before you make the jump, uh, so some consistent clients so that, you know, you know, I've got these three clients that are pretty much going to cover my monthly expenses plus this, excuse me, runway in case, you know, I lose them to cover me for another six months. So you, that kind of security helps you, uh, be a little smarter, think a little more long-term. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I, I also, but the, the flip side of that coin, um, is an argument I make often is that, you know, I'm a big advocate of burning the boats. Uh, I, mm -hmm. I think that, um, you know, uh, waiting for the right moment is in itself kind of a form of procrastination. So sometimes you just kind of have to jump and learn to fly on the way down. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm a fed and like everybody, uh, you know, take into account your own, uh, willingness to take risk, your own, uh, risk profile. But, uh, you know, I'm a big fan of, of making kind of the more uncomfortable decision and, and, and watching yourself, uh, rise to the occasion. God, I mean, that the confidence there is very admirable. Um, as scary as anything, but, um, Mike is saying clients start out thinking, you know what you're doing. Never, ever let them find out you don't, um, <laughs> you know, it's definitely it's the way to yeah. approach it. It's good. Yeah. Um, no, it's true. I mean, I, you know, I think that on every project, if you can find something new to try, uh, you know, it's a good way to grow. What, a, a key piece of advice I had early on in my career was never learn on someone else's dime, uh, which, which I really, I really took to heart. And so I, I took, you know, jobs that I could kind of learn along the way. Now I was confident in my ability to deliver the things that I said I was going to deliver, but, um, more often than not, especially in those early years, I would, I would say yes. And then go figure out how to do it. Absolutely. Um, my, uh, I remember my first big gig in TV was, uh, I was at a block party in Sherman Oaks and, uh, you know, some, some, some people, some recognizable, uh, movie folk were there and a friend of a friend of mine, um, is a producer for stand up comedy and, or was a producer for stand up comedy. And he said his, his AD, his assistant director, uh, couldn't do this special they're shooting up in Chicago in a week. And I said, I'm an, I can do it. He says, okay, cool. He's like, you, you AD? I said, absolutely. Yeah, I AD. And he goes, okay, well, let's meet about it tomorrow. And then I got in my car and I Googled, what does an AD do? You know, uh, and, um, and, and how, how did it, how did my, the job go? Did, did you oh, I knocked it out? I, I produced the next one for him. I, I went straight from assistant director to producer and second unit director. So it was, uh, you know, it's just, it's just, you know, but again, like you have to be confident that, because I, I, I know that based on what he was saying, this person manages people and, you know, keeps an eye on the time. And, and those are things that I'm pretty good at. So, uh, yeah. yeah. Dung, you have your bases covered for the idea of uh, being able to easy to work with. That's something that I learned very quickly, too, was that skill definitely takes a part of uh, a big part of jobs and references. But the thing that I really have found is the thing that trumps any of that is uh, ease of workness and communication. And 100%. You can, yep. you know, just draw stick figures and they'll still pick you over the person that, you know, can can draw, can draw you know, a Da Vinci and... Uh, uh, it's a dick. If, yeah. If, if, yeah, it's <laughs> a dick or is uh, somebody that can't uh, communicate or doesn't meet deadlines. Like, you're always going to win that. So it's kind of being the, in the right place at the right time and also just remembering to talk to clients and to the point of what I was saying earlier as well was like listening is such a big thing as well. And being like, what do you need? What is your success? Um, and going and moving, traversing it's, that way. It's always 99.9% .9 of the time. It's the, uh, it's the, the, the skilled communicator gets the job over the best practitioner. That's what I, I always say. And it's, you know, uh, that's very good news for all of us because, none of us are the most skilled at what we do statistically we're just not like there is always going to be somebody who is better than you at a thing um yeah. but you know you've been learning how to communicate with other human beings since you were born so that's something that we're all pretty good at you know and uh and if you can just yeah put put their you know put their strategy first lead with strategy and then back into the creative from there and uh you know just always be a joy to hear from uh you're going to be in pretty good shape Absolutely. And you've said a few things that I've actually seen on your um, TikToks and your Instagrams. Uh, I sound so old when I'm saying like on your TikToks. And on, your the, on the TikTok. On the TikTok. 
Um, but I, what I did um, is I want to go into one of our segments uh, that is called From This to That, uh, where we look at your uh, oldest post and your most recent post. From This to That. So I went ahead and I pulled up both your uh, your oldest one and your newest one. That I think you posted yesterday. I don't know if you posted today or not, um, but I have them side by side here. And um, I'm thinking we can check them out and then we can talk a little bit about them. I've grown my freelance business from 850 a month to 20K a month. Here's some tricks I picked up along the way. Save aggressively. When you're not financially secure, you won't be focused on growth. And you'll agree to doing more for less, digging that hole deeper. Busy period followed by a dry spell. Sound familiar? Break this cycle by prospecting every day. You're not charging enough. Double your rates now. And then perform that exercise at least twice a year as you grow your offering. If you know you can have something done in a week, quote a week and a half. Then turn it in four days early and look like a hero. They're asking for my price. How do I come up with that? Think of your price as overhead plus value times expertise. Yeah, that meant nothing to me. Overhead is how much it costs you to do the thing. Okay. Your value relates to how much they'll make off the thing. Cool. And then expertise is all the intangibles, relationships, and speed you'll bring to the thing. Sure. Totally understand, but... Now, I have a question for you. Um, yeah. Between these two personalities, one, are they both Jamie? Do you Or do you like refer to one as like a different name? Um, I guess that's my first question. <laughs> no, yeah, I, I'd consider them both Jamie. It's just, uh, well, I, I honestly, I call them the pro and the newbie. I don't, they are not me, you know, but, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I, I think uh, elements of my personality shine through in both. The the anxiety and blunderingness of blunderingness, but the uh, the <laughs> chaos of the newbie is my favorite. Like one of the ones that's up there is, uh, it's like, uh, should I be? Should be thinking about taxes. <laughs> <laughs> and the pro is like, yes. Oh my God. How can you have that question right now? <laughs> Ironically, um, like that's, that's the kind of shit that I still say. Like my, I, you know, I'm very much the uh, aloof creative and my, my wife is the one, you know, uh, keeping the ship together. And she, yeah. She's always like, yes, <laughs> I need to be thinking about taxes. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> man, that's what, what was cool about. And this is just, I, you know, I'm a big fan of pointing in a direction and, and going there, you know, and, and uh, what was cool about watching that. I don't think I've watched that first reel in a long time, maybe, maybe almost, maybe since I posted it, maybe in a year and some change. And, uh, and that, you know, was to me represented two big goals for the year was uh, I wanted to get uh, an audience of a hundred thousand on Instagram. And uh, we were, that was the year of uh, we wanted to build to 50,000 a month for, for our freelance income. And, uh, you know, by August, uh, we had hit both, both goals. And uh, now right, that's you know, just this, a little bit over what half the year or when, when it was that one in January or, and, yeah, and I think that was, was that reel was probably posted in March or April. Um, wow. So even faster than that half a year. Yeah. And um we well, you know, at the time of posting that reel, I think we were averaging about thirty thousand a month. Um, so, you know, I was being a little conservative there, but you know, we we hit our our goal and then we exceeded it uh, substantially by the end of the year. And then this year, I my my dumbass got on a live with uh, Christo and I said, "This is the year that uh, it's going to be the year of the million for us. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna net a million dollars. And we're gonna." Uh, you know, have an, an aggregate of a million followers between uh, all of our social networks. And, and Chris is like, all right, we're going to do checkups on that. It. I was like, son of a, I heard it come out of my mouth. I was like, no, not, not in this forum. Don't say it here. But uh, um, so that's what we're working on this year is we're, we're trying to get to six figure months. And, uh, and it's a different, it's a different way of thinking. Um, mm -hmm. You have to think about solutions differently. Um, but uh yeah, it's an exciting. It's it's just fun to watch that. That was a nice little moment for me. I appreciate you playing that. Yeah, of course. Um, it's also just really exciting to see how your format has changed and how um, you, you know you have the music and you're kind of like leaning over and hunched into it, and then now you have you know that that conversation between the two. Um, there is a question that I had been meaning to ask you. Um, 
What is your favorite flavor of LaCroix? Uh, Pamplemousse. Yes, that's the <laughs> right answer. Uh, that's what we always get. Um, rots our teeth because I'm just constantly having um, carbonated water. Uh, but yeah, we have problems it. all the time. So that makes me happy. Yeah. Um, the, uh... Have you talked to them at all? Have no, they ever said anything to you? I always joke. It's, you know, if they ever, if they ever come calling, I'm going to, I'm going to get our audience a sick discount, whatever it is. Yeah. But uh, um, no, I have, I haven't reached out to them. I'm just surprised they haven't seen it at this point. I wonder if they had like, cause I, I, when I worked at my old agency, whenever we would stumble across something like that, it was always this like miraculous, you know, engines firing um, kind of connection. Also, I'm sorry. You can hear that car alarm. New York city. <laughs> Over here. It's just all freaking landscapers. I'd say I have to I'm just constantly like <laughs> just always construction and always uh, watering the lawns. Yeah. Yeah, no house is ever finished here. Um, all right. So uh, the next thing that I wanted to hop into is since we're talking about um, uh, uh, your process and, and, and hopping onto the socials, um, I kind of wanted to talk about how these um, these sections and these segments come to mind um, and kind of how you plan them out and how you plan your social media. Um, and we normally have something called what's in your sketchbook. Obviously, yours is a little different. But um, let's do that segment, and we can talk a little bit about your process. Ooh, what's in your sketchbook? Actually, and I also want to call out um, Andrew Cook said that uh, a quote that helped uh, him a ton when he decided to take the jump was, "The longer you wait to take that step, the shorter the future will be when you get there," which is grim and dark, but also beautiful, and I love it. <laughs> I I love that, and I'll try to keep this tangent quick. But I, you know. I like most uh, over these last two years have gotten a little introspective, um, and you know I've, I've been reading a lot of uh, a lot of philosophy, and I'm a big student of Stoicism, and that's a that's a uh, that kind of mimics a uh, a key insight that I've picked up from Stoicism, which is you know whatever uh, uh, people are afraid of the end, right? It's it's the way that time works is. Uh, you know, people are afraid of death and it's like, why, why be afraid of death? Because any time that has passed belongs to death. Right. right. So you've already, all the time that's gone by is gone, you know? And, and, and that was a kind of a light bulb moment for me where it's just, oh, you yeah, know, do the thing today, you know? Um, but uh, yeah, the moment of absolute decision never, never arrives. So, so just, just make the call and get moving learn along the way. But my sketchbook, I actually, you know, because I don't have a sketchbook, but I do have, hang on, I'll be right back. Yeah, sure. I'm going to blow up my face in the meantime. Um, actually, while uh, while Jamie runs off to do that, I think now, um, before we come right back to the sketchbook thing, we'll do some monkey paws. So let's do some monkey paws. <laughs> All right, guys, we are about an hour into our stream. Uh, a lot of you are probably working on um, some stuff while this stream is going on in the background. Thank you for being here. Thank you for working and lurking. It's great to have you. Um, but you should really focus on your health. Uh, we're sitting here and we're hunched over our computers or your phone um, or if you're on the toilet. Um, I'll, I'll take it. I'm just glad that you're here. Um, but uh, the uh, importance of our hands and our jobs as creatives and even non-creatives just working on Excels um, is very important. And uh, if you lose access to them, you're going to lose access to uh, your workflow and your money funnel. So um, uh, this is a, a series of stretches that I learned through Anna Davis Court, who also um, illustrated these beautiful monkeys that uh, I took and then I animated into that intro. Um, and it's basically just a quick thing that you can do uh, in intervals each day um, to really just make sure that you are taking care of your hands and your arms. Uh, and it's just a good reminder to focus on your body when you are doing so many repetitive motions each day. So the first thing that you're going to do is um, you're going to reach forward and you're going to show your hands, um, like kind of like to show that, you know, you, you have blood in your hands or something. What does it call you? Red handed. Um, and you're going to extend them as, as much as you can. And then you're going to bring them down into monkey paws. And you say, ooh, ooh, ah, ah, that's the first one. All right. And then you're going to release that. You're going to put your palms down. So uh, the top of your hand is out forward. 
And then you're going to bring in your fingers again. Ooh, ah, ah. You can feel it. If it hurts at any point, stop. Um, you only want to do this, you know, it's kind of like when you're um, stretching your legs and you're, you know, you're, you're reaching for your toes. You don't want to, you don't want to hurt yourself. There's no reason why it should hurt. Um, you want to flip it over. Uh, palms to the sky. I kind of even bring them down even a little bit more for some more stretching so that it's kind of like, here you go. You bring it in. Ooh, ah, ah. And then you're going to bring it in to yourself. And this is the one that always it, it, it's hard for everyone for different ones. But this one's my the hardest one for me. And you want to really focus, make sure you put these thumbs in for this one. But you're going to bring it towards yourself and then you're going to bring it in. You're going to. Ooh, ooh, ah, ah. <sighs> Thank you for the ooh, ooh, ah, ahs in chat. I appreciate you, Annika. Uh, Put some put some monkeys in the chat if you guys are doing it as well. I hope you guys are. Um, you're gonna shake up your your hands a little bit, um, just you know, gentle, and uh, you're gonna make it so that you can just do it a few times. Um, you can do this for as many times as you want. Um, I, I tend to do it um, like two or three times every time I do it, and uh, it's actually really helped me. Honestly, I, I had a, a a bad spell a few weeks ago where I was working too much and too late and too rigorously that. Um, my my arm was just absolutely killing me, and um, thankfully with these uh, exercises, it's gotten a little bit better. Another one you can do that's not monkey related is you bring it in um, your arm like this, and go all the way out, uh, and you want to spread your your finger as much as you can and bring it back as much as you can. And these ones feel really good, and you can feel that one all the way up your arm. Um, and okay, I did it for four times. Oh, look at all those monkeys! Thank you guys. I appreciate all the monkeys. I'm glad you guys are focusing on yourself. Another thing that um, Annika likes to mention and Anna likes to mention um, is that uh, it's important to drink water and also give yourself uh, some neck stretches. You know, get stand up if you can and you want to, um, if you're willing and able. Um, but most importantly, uh, just listen to your body and uh, just be be cognizant of the fact that you're not getting vitamin D because you're inside. Um, just, you know. It's important to have a work-life balance that's healthy for you. So anyway, that's monkey paws. It looks like Jamie is back um, with his uh, his sketchbook. So we'll play the sketchbook thing one more time just because Annika likes the Ryan do because I sound like Scooby-Doo. Um, <laughs> and then we'll bring Jamie back in. Ooh, what's in your sketchbook? All right. Hey. Welcome back, Jamie. It was literally, I was gone for two seconds and I come back and you're making monkey noises. <laughs> and... <laughs> that's how it goes it's uh it's 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 a, it's a quick spiral <laughs> <laughs> i was like oh, oh okay cool i got it um no i went to get this this is where i i i script my um my reels out because people are always asking how do you do the loops and all that stuff and, um mm -hmm. but uh bef before we get to that the actual content, the, you know, when I first got started, it was really easy to come up with ideas because it's just, it's, you know, it's, we're all going through the same shit. It's, you know, it's me 10 years ago. And uh, so I was just writing to that person. Uh, and then as you build your audience a little bit, you start getting, you start having conversations and, you know, people come to you with actual with problems from their uh, freelance journey. And that informs the content. Uh, I'm in kind of phase three of content now for folks that are trying to build uh, an audience where I now have the data and I can let the data be my guide on uh, what the highest performing content is. Uh, so, you know, I've got, I went through and I took my top 25 highest, uh, most engaged, highest performing reels. Um, and then I got this guy out one week and I wrote five versions of each each reel, right? So it's just like this, you just go through and it's, I would take, you know, real, this is real three and here's version A, version B, version, you know, uh, and it, you know, essentially it's just me rewarding it or me exploring a caveat or a gray area that, that hasn't been explored in, in that topic. Um, and, you know, in the span of two, three days, I wrote 125 reels, you know, wow. uh, and it's but again it's you let the data be your guide it was probably the easiest time i've ever had writing content um and i've just started posting the first batch batch a and uh my hypothesis so far has proven to be correct because you know they're outperforming previous reels like you know big time especially on tiktok i think we've grown 
by about 60,000 in the last seven days on TikTok just by posting. Wow. Posting wow. all reels. That's, yeah. that's almost because, no, yeah, you're, you're, I haven't pulled up here. It's, you're at 174 now. So that you're almost, you're getting close to doubling your, your audience in like a week, which is yep. crazy. Yep. So that's, and you know, and, but that's a takeaway that you can use in your own freelance career too. That's a line that my clients love to hear when I say, you know, well, let's just let the data be our guide. You know, let's, I, I ask for, I, I don't, I don't assume, or I don't intuit that I have the solution to the problem. You know, let's take a look at the data. Let's, let's try and, you know, and, and, and figure out what the solution is based on that. You know, they, their problem may not even be what they think it is. So, yeah, um, it sounds like Jiminy Cricket in my ear. Uh, I think it's Jiminy Cricket when he's like, let your conscience be your let guide. Let your conscience be your guide. Yep. <laughs> you, just, you just gotta do that and just put it with data. And then what do you know? I mean, if it works, it works. I'd, I'd love to hear um, kind of a follow up on that um, down the road to see if it continues to be really successful because it's something with social media. Um, and I know we're talking a lot about social media today, but I think that is such a big part of um, your business is because uh, that's an offering that you can obviously propose as well because you you know what you're doing and you're experimenting with new things. But um, I think it's really interesting when you follow someone that these platforms don't like to resurface the old content TikTok's a little bit better than instagram about resurfing old content but unless someone is going out of their way and they're scrolling down through your past stuff the idea that people are not going to be able to see all the hard work you've put up into this point is is something that you often kind of forget about and you think oh well, i'm not going to repost it because everyone's already seen that but then you know you you, you said you've gotten sixty thousand followers in the last week sixty thousand people hundred percent of those people are not scrolling down and looking at your old videos. Right. So especially not even just reposting them, but adding more to it by either rewording it or adding like small caveats is, is a really smart approach. So, and I mean, even to your audience that is following you, you're, you're not reaching all of them with one post, right? It's, yeah. uh, it's a very, it's a, it's like, you know, 10, 20% of your audience is actually going to see the posts. So I, uh, I still, I'll, I'll post reels. You know, I, I went from the mustache to the beard over the last three or four months and I'm still getting people commenting, oh, he has a beard now, you know, and yeah. it's, it, it just goes to show like that person who I'll go click and they follow me hasn't seen something from me in four months, you know, yeah. uh, so you got to think about it like that. Speaking of which, um, I cannot believe that you are 32 and that you can grow that beard. I, I am I am 29 and it is. uh it's nowhere close. I, I hope I, you, you want you want a million uh, you want a million followers this year. I want a beard like that, so we can both <laughs> have our own goals. <laughs> I want a steady diet of scotch and cigars. That's been the uh, that's been my trick for for many years. <laughs> All right, I'll have to try that out. I'll let you know how that goes. <laughs> I'll give you some back with a horrible tobacco addiction. I'm doing four <laughs> four cigars a day, and and my liver's dead from all the scotch. But <laughs> I kid, obviously. Um, also, I always say this every single stream, but I haven't said it yet today. Uh, this is Adobe Live, but I am not speaking on behalf of Adobe. <laughs> so anything that I endorse or like, condemn <laughs> or say is not. This is a great uh, time to bring that up. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Want to put that out there. Uh, thank you for this opportunity, Adobe. Um, I've, I've had a blast hosting this. Um, I want to also uh, approach your difference between these two platforms, um, uh, which is uh, interesting to like actually pull up both and put them side by side and see that um, you have very similar um, reels that I feel like you are, are probably even almost repost of TikTok, but you have gone through and you've made these beautiful, recognizable um, cover things because that's obviously best for Instagram. But then over on TikTok, it looks way more native and you have these um, big, like this is the title of of what you've got and there's really no illustration what was the um thinking behind having this division have you found that it's been good for business or do you feel like it feels like two separate entities uh yeah i mean content wise there's a lot of overlap uh they, sh they share a lot um i you know i had the benefit again of the data from the instagram to know what my best performing posts were when i started on TikTok. i just led with the three best performing posts. And in like, I think 48 hours, we got 50,000 followers. It was just like, wow. a, like a, you know, uh, 
kind of shock and awe moment, but the, uh, or blitz, that's a better term for it. But the, um, the key differentiator in the feed is that on TikTok, uh, if you look at the analytics, it's like 1% of people, uh, that follow me, uh, followed me from my feed, you know? So a lot of the action on TikTok is just on the, on the scrolling, the for you page. Um, and you, they just follow straight from the video. Uh, so there's just really no, there's, there's no benefit to, to, you know, it's, it's no juice to, uh, to justify the squeeze, um, on, on that end. But, uh, Instagram used to uh, justify the squeeze. Yeah. Amy Brindle, everybody. <laughs> Put that on the plaque. Uh, yep. But the, um, uh, you know, on Instagram, people do come over to the profile to make the, the follow uh, decision. Um, so you've got to be a little more buttoned up. Which is uh, so funny because like, I know Instagram's curated and that it's all like the perfect version of ourselves as well. But it's just funny because also Instagram is also where you see the junkiest stuff as well. And it's it's a weird kind of connection of these two worlds. Um, but obviously, um, it looks very professional and it feels great. Um, and I have a bunch of them saved into my folder, which is nice. Um, okay. But uh, but yeah, also in the chat, people are saying uh, I was going to ask for beard tips. So this is the content I need. Oliver says this is not Adobe's official stance on beards and reverb Mike says you have to commit to the beard. It will grow if you believe. So thank you everybody for that. Mike's not wrong. Mike's not wrong. I, <laughs> I, I'm yeah. just not believing enough. Clearly. <laughs> um, hello to Elizabeth Moth. Welcome to the chat. Um, something that we briefly talked about. Um, and I said that I was going to do for you. Uh, I didn't have time to make an intro for it, which is sad because I definitely feel like we could have made a really cool intro for this guy. Um, but it is kind of looking at different um, client approaches and uh, seeing what kind of sticks out as a red flag for you. Um, so let's play uh, a game of, uh, it pops up for me here. It's processing. By the way, Streamer, it's really cool. You can now in integrate, um, for everybody watching, uh, you can now integrate um, Google Slides into your streams and then cycle through them, which is um, really cool. This is how, um, voila. yeah, <laughs> how it goes and it just pops up and you can, you know, go back and forth. So love StreamYard. Once again, not an Adobe endorsement, just a Ryan endorsement, but StreamYard is great. Um, so the first one we have is this is an amazing opportunity. Uh, looking for a designer to help me and my friends with the project. We recently raised money through a Kickstarter and need a website. Uh, we would be unable to pay you in dollars, but we'll give you plenty of bloop coin. Um, uh, how would you uh, approach kind of having someone <laughs> like this approach you? I would assume that if it was an email, it might just even be something where you don't even touch it. But let's say yeah. that someone uh, walks up to you at a conference and says this, what would uh, what would you do? Yeah, that's that's a pass. I, I, I always, you know, I mean, OK, let's let's think of this more in terms of I'll put myself in uh, kind of just starting out freelance where you where you can't be as picky about the jobs you take on. Right. Uh, so let's try and make it work uh you know the the first thing you want to neutralize is this feeling that somehow this is an opportunity for you right uh so i'd say you know that's that's really great you know that's i'm i'm i'm, I'm happy for you guys uh you know we're, we're a little busy but well <laughs> let's 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 have a chat you know just like let's take it down a notch um yeah but, but let's see you're looking for a designer to help me a few friends with projects or maybe one your kickstarter uh we would be unable to pay you in dollars but we'll give you plenty of blue coin so it, it is I this is how old I am. I'm assuming this is a Bitcoin uh, reference and blue coin. Yeah, no, yeah, it's just, I didn't say Bitcoin. That somebody I didn't has come up with. Knock yeah. anything. <laughs> so I just said blue coin. Also, yeah. as old as I am, you're three years older. You're fine. You've got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I I know I would just have a quick conversation with them about uh, about their goals. What what kind of turnaround are you looking for? Uh, you know, what is the, the, the dream end result of this project? Okay, this is how much it's going to cost in in dollars, uh, you know, and uh, and and leave it at that. I, you know, you don't want to do uh, anything you're not comfortable with, and you know, again, you you want to kind of bring them back to neutral. People, I found that, and this this happens usually uh, still in, in my career in the form of, uh, you know, can we get a discount? We're going to bring you a lot of work this quarter, you know, and people are excited. They're not being malicious usually when they say that. They're just really pumped about 
the fact yeah. that they're they've got a lot to do. Um, and more often than not, they have uh, overestimated the amount of work they're going to bring you, you know, or, yes. uh, you know, their influence these... is, is dramatically smaller than they expect. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so, you know, uh, you, you want to express that you're excited for them. I'm happy to hear that. I'm, I'm you know, I'm, I'm excited you guys are doing great. But then, you know, bring it back to planet Earth and, and, and say, you know, okay, what's what in, in you know, what is the real scope of this project what is the real end game because that's oftentimes something folks that are not to generalize but folks that are this excited excitable about something like this uh usually haven't even sat down to think through what the desired end result is right uh, so strategy, like, let's, or... let's tie let's tie this let's anchor this conversation to you know some real success metrics um and then i'm gonna i'm you know i'm gonna make some thoughtful suggestions and and tell you how much i think this will probably cost to pull off and you know, it, now, it, um, in your personal experience, um, have you ever had things like shares or, um, I don't know, non-traditional payment methods uh, contribute to um, taking a job or not? Or for the most part, do you live by the philosophy where if it's not dollars up front, it's not worth your time? Uh, I, for the most part, yeah, I, I, I'm sure... Uh, at some point in early career, uh, there was some bartering happening. I don't recall. <laughs> um, but I think that, you know, I, in almost every instance from the very beginning, um, you know, we were exchanging money for a solution, uh, which is all businesses at the end of the day. So and the, the bigger the problem you're solving, the, the, the bigger the money. Um, so yeah, I think that it's best for the project if money changes hands. I think it, it puts a little skin in the game for the client um you know and uh yeah it just you want to especially at that you know stage of your career I, I i think that folks who are just getting started get hung up on this um you know well i need clients to make a portfolio uh to get more clients you know so i need to take on free work to build this portfolio and it's you can build a portfolio without clients just go you know spend yeah. a weekend doing whatever it is you do uh, you know, in, in four different iterations and take that show on the road. You don't need, you don't need to do free work to build a portfolio. Um, and, and, you know, you don't want to be when, when the time comes where you have leads coming in, paying clients coming in, you don't want to be in a position where you're busy with free work, you know, uh, and, and you have to, you have to figure that out. You have to figure out how to either ditch the the free work person or, you know, or give the paid client more attention. So, I just, you know, I just say, skip the, uh, skip the heartache and, and, and just try and take a little, at least a little something for each project. Yeah. Take, take what works and, and actually have, uh, quantifiable, uh, rewards. I, I yeah. saw, um, in a book that I was reading right before I, I went full freelance was, um, uh, it was the author of actually, uh, he also does motion design school. Um, and he wrote a, uh, book about, um, freelancing for creatives and motion designers. And he says, no one's ever going to hire you for something that you've never done before, uh, which I know to the point of what we were talking about earlier, saying yes, and then figuring out is one thing. I think that is in a separate silo. I think what he's getting at more there is like, you don't need the clients to get the job that you want, like build what you want to work on so that you can then show that to others. And then that is a use case example be like, look, I can do this for you. Because if me just telling you I can do for you is not going to be the same as you seeing something that already I've concepted and then didn't really get out. So yeah, that was cool. No. It's it's a, especially early in your career. It's, it's already an uphill battle. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's tough. It's a tough sell if, if you're inexperienced and you have no examples of, of what yes. you're capable of. Yeah. It's, it's almost an impossible feat. Uh, Reverb Mike says, I did a job for unlimited tacos, but they went out of business three weeks later. <laughs> was it was it was it solely because of you and how many tacos you uh, yeah. <laughs> you, you ate? Are you are you, yeah. <laughs> you the reason? Um, also, Elizabeth Mike says, Discord is an odd place to get freelance work. Honestly, speaking with experience. Yeah, no, Discord can get real scammy, um, but also it is a great way to communicate with people. So I wouldn't completely write it off. But yeah, you always I always think that it's important to get on a call and talk about something because you don't want to just kind of work with um, a, na a faceless uh, text wall because, you know, they could always just rug pull you. Absolutely. All right. Um, next uh, up in our like 
kind of dating game sort of thing. Uh, we have client two, which is nobody wants to work anymore. I can't seem to find anyone for this job. It's a quick turnaround so we can get details figured out later. I just need someone to hit the ground running. Great. So quick turnaround is one that we run into a lot uh, as freelancers. And it's, uh, you know, it's, it's a, it's a great chance to actually land a, uh, land a client pretty quickly and pretty efficiently. Uh, so that's the pain point that they're trying to solve. Um, so you speak to that, right? Uh, this whole, nobody wants to work anymore, uh, bit is, is obviously a red flag. Clearly this is probably a client that you don't want to uh, have anything to do with, but, um, the, uh, you know, uh, but the, the, the key thing to, to, to learn from this is when somebody says that they're, uh, the job's a quick turnaround, um, you know, speak to that, say, I've got plenty of experience working on this in that capacity. And we can definitely turn this around for figure out how quick they're talking. And if it's doable, uh, you know, you don't want to lie. If, if, if it's not doable, tell them it's not doable. Um, but, you know, say, uh, you know, we can definitely get that turned around for you. Uh, this is what we're quoting. It would have a rush fee baked in, uh, you know, and, uh, and, Usually, uh, if if it's that quick of a turnaround, we just build the whole thing uh, up front um, at, rather than the usual 50-50. Uh, you know, we could still do the 50-50, though. And, um, you know, a lot of folks will say, well, it's, you know, accounting takes 30 days, yada, yada. You know, uh, if it really is a quick turnaround, uh, I've yet to find the client who couldn't get me paid uh, immediately to get it done. Yeah. Um, and I'm I, talking, there's a reel you have about that, that is yeah. um, saying like, they're like, okay, we can't get it. You're like, okay, cool. I'll send over the assets once you get, um, once you, once you get the payment up and they're like, oh, oops, wow. Accounting got it figured out. Here it is yeah. an hour yeah. later. <laughs> Even if it's just the deposit before any assets, if you're just, you know, if, if it's a quick turnaround and, and, you know, they say, say, what is it Thursday? They need it on Monday. Great. We can get started today. Uh, we need that deposit to, to hit the account first and then we'll hit go on the project. And, oh, well, it's going to take us 30 days. Oh, well, I, we can get started in 30 days, but it sounds like that's, <laughs> that's not going to, you know, do it for you guys. And magically the, the, the money gets wired, you know, and, and this has worked uh, for us for deposits ranging from, you know, a couple thousand dollars to $50,000 deposits. Like, I mean, this, there is no limit to how quickly money can move. Uh, so you just, uh, you know, stand your ground. Uh, usually it's just, I don't want to handle, I don't want to deal with accounting right now, you know, yeah. uh, is what's really being expressed. Um, but uh, yeah, don't, don't do the rush job until you've got uh, some money in the bank. Sounds good. Um, client three, calling all artists who are having a design contest to find our next logo. The winner will be paid $300 and have the opportunity to work with, work with, to work with us on creating an identity. Yeah. I mean, again, it's, it's a, it's just another way of saying do work for free. You know, um, I, it, that would be one that I'd advise you don't take. Um, I think, uh, even, I mean, even the $300 for the, for the, the effort is pro sounds really low. Uh, but, yeah, um, because you're not even going to necessarily get that $300. Yeah. Yeah. Only yeah. Even if you win it winner. though, I feel like you'd still be upset with. <laughs> oh, hundred percent. I mean, yeah, you know, like, and as you said, there's different, different standards in different countries and yada, yada, yeah, so yeah, I yeah. Want, I don't yeah. want to shame anyone, but, um, no. but I, I, I would, I would quote a logo at much higher than $300. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I, I think that, uh, you know, we have in the past done tests where, uh, you know, a, I, tr I try to avoid a test because I, and I'll just tell them like, that's what pre-production is for, you know, we're, we've got that built into our process and we're going to make sure that we're on the same page creatively before we get, you know, too far down the road. Um, so, you know, the, the testing thing, uh, there's a lot of, uh, uh, there's a lot of work to be done between ideation and iteration is, is what I've said in the past. And, you know, even if it's just a test, you still want to do a good job on the test, right? So you're still going to spend just as much time thinking about it and developing and crafting it, uh, you know, as you would, if it were your job to begin with. So you got to get paid for that. You got to like a lot, like it's, you know, like that's a big part of uh, the business of creativity is the thinking part. Um, so if you're, uh, you know, if, if a client comes in and just wants to do a quick test, uh, you know, and, and you want to go for it, say, 
you know, for sure, here, here's, here's my quote for, for the test. Um, and, you know, it should be, you know, it should be a, a decent chunk of change. I know you had a um, reel somewhere about that, actually. Um, yeah, it's recent. Yeah. Which was, it's, it's one of your biggest ones. Um, that was like a, a biggest waste of time, um, is what you said. And it was working on a proposal without even talking about the, um, the budget like bucket that they want to even work with. So then it's like, Oh, cool. You wasted the whole day on a proposal and it turns out that their budget is $200. So yeah. Yeah. Um, you you want to qualify that for sure. Um, you know, that's if, if you don't know that the the lead can afford your services, you want to get that conversation out of the way real quick. Um, yeah. You know, for, for the most part uh, I'm at a stage in my career where, you know, we, we know about what, you know, a, a company can spend. Uh, so we, we kind of, we've, whether through due diligence or just through the reputation, you know, we, we, we know they can afford us, but uh, yeah, if you're just kind of, you know, somebody who you know, you're, you're fielding a request, you want to make sure that, you know, uh, uh, you know, what, what their expectations are in terms of scope and budget uh, and, and, you know, and then start Which, the once again is listening, you know? Yep. Um, all right. Next one. Uh, and this is actually kind of goes off of what we were just talking perfectly, which is we love your stuff. We would uh, just like to see a test run of your approach first. Can you knock out the first few social posts and then we can go from there? But um, yeah. to your point, yeah, it seems like it's like, no, you, you should you should have it set up and figure it out and, you know, come to agreed upon terms and then you can kind of go from there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hi, Jack. I, that's, I have nothing to add. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and then client five, I think this is the last one I have is found your work and love your energy. Unfortunately, we don't have a, a lot of money, so we can't afford your normal rate. Can you just decrease your rate? This I yeah, this is the first client that I, I haven't been repelled by. This is a this is a normal, you know, request and this is a normal way to ask it. Uh, so, um, you know, it, and it's a it's a it's a frequent or a common request. Uh, you know, I I always say negotiate the scope don't negotiate your fee. Um, so if they don't, if they legitimately don't have the budget to get something done, uh, then, you know, we'll ask, okay, what are we, what, what size, what's the size of the sandbox we're trying to play in? You know, what's, what's, what is your budget? Um, and let's have a conversation about what can be done for that amount. Um, you know, so that way there's a give and take. It's not, you, you don't just come down to whatever their number is. You're gonna, you're gonna shrink the deliverable to make sense for that, for that budget. Um, uh, a, a different version of this conversation that you see a lot is a client will come at you with a number. They, you know, they've got a budget in mind and this is a, this is, there's a key difference here is that they're not saying we can't afford you. They're saying, you know, we want to do this for $5,000. Um, yeah. you know, and it's, it behooves you to say, well, is the goal to spend $5,000 or is the goal to land on the most effective solution here? Because oftentimes they've just pulled that number out, you know, and they could spend some more money uh, and they don't know the implication or the the benefit that an extra grand, an extra two grand would do for them. Right. It's like, if you, yeah. if you guys can just find another 2,500 bucks, I can get you way closer to the finish line. I can get you, I can get you exactly where you need to be. Um, you know, so I don't want to, I don't want to stop short of that. If the money's here, if the money's there, um, and it's a very perfectly normal conversation to have. If they say, no, we've just got five grand. Like, okay, cool. Then you revert back to, let's find, you know, let's find the, uh, the version of this idea that makes sense for five grand. Um, now do you build out for your own records, um, kind of like a tier system of deliverables that you can give to someone for rates in your own experience? Like, do you know the things that you always like can easily cut back on? I, I assume that's something that you would probably gain with years of experience of like trying to downscale and upscale projects. Yeah, absolutely. I, but like, I keep all of that internal, right? That's not. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. That's what my, my wife and I, we, you know, we're, we know where our kind of our, our, our floor is. Uh, mm -hmm. I always say that your rate is your floor, not your ceiling. So we know what we, what the, we know the cheapest version of this and, and you know what that will entail. Um, but that's, that's rarely do we, do we get to that floor, you know? Um, but yeah, it's, it, again, it, you keep, let the data be your guide, keep an eye on, uh, you know, as, as you progress, uh, do kind of a post game after each project with yourself and, uh, 
and and start collecting this data that that's going to help you have these conversations uh, more effectively. Um, one last thing that I want to touch on, um, because I know you've been here for about an hour and a half. We appreciate you being on the show. Thank you so much for being here. Um, no and if, if you're cool for right after this, if we could just do a quick Q and a, if anyone has any questions. Um, but the thing that I, uh, I talked to you a little bit about yesterday and I wanted to see, um, your thoughts on it now is the idea that like in the beginning of your career, you, um, are kind of grunt work. You're hitting the ground running. You're taking opportunities where you can. You're trying to figure out what you want to do. And uh, as you scale your business and as you grow, not everyone's going to create their own business. Some people will continue to do design work um, uh, because that's where their passion is. But for others, like building a business and um, managing others is something that really interests them. And your experience, I know that you're having a lot of experience with subcontracting and um, creative direction. how do you make that change and um, how does that feel to kind of shift your, um, not your career path, but you shift your, your approach to what work is? I'm not going to lie to you. I was having technical difficulties for the back half of that question. <laughs> oh, it's okay. You can just talk on whatever you want. Basically, no, subcontracting, one, one more time. going yeah. from making it to delegating it uh just i talked a lot about that subcontracting yeah i um yeah i mean i i always say that people ask when do you know it's time to make that jump and it's uh you know there's a graphic that i posted early in my instagram where it's try to spend half your time uh developing new business and half your time delivering on current business and and any time uh you can't manage that ratio uh, for an extended period of time. It's time to it's time to scale your business. It's time to either increase your rates uh, or bring in some 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 subcontractors to get you back to that ratio. Uh, so you know that's that's a good like signifier of okay. Let me think about subcontracting um, to find subcontractors. Uh, I'm always looking for subcontractors. You don't you don't want to be looking for a subcontractor when you need one. You want to you want to have kind of a deep bench of creative collaborators that you can go to that you know how they work that you know um, you know what they're generally what they're going to cost. Um, and so I do that on you know I, l- luckily early in my career I live in LA. So you throw a rock and you hit a cameraman. You know so <laughs> it's it's not you know that that wasn't hard to build that network. But nowadays. Um, you know, for like the motion design stuff you do, uh, you know, I'll I'll reach out to folks on Instagram and I'll just say, Hey, love your stuff. I'd love to work with you one day. You know, can you jump on a quick 15? Just, we just chat, you know? Um, and I tell them a little bit about our agency and, and, you know, the stuff we're working on so that they know it's not just kind of a, you know, a random dude reaching out, wanting to, wanting to steal some time. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, that's, that way you've got a, a list you can feel secure. Uh, and I talk to them about their rates and I always say, you know, it, you know, I, we don't have a gig right now. Um, could, could I just get your thoughts on about what you charge for this, about what you charge for that. And, and I, I always say what I tell folks to do, you know, in their own careers, as I say, if, you know, obviously I'm not going to hold you to this rate. I just want kind of an idea. Um, you know, if, if we can get you more, we're going to take that shot. Uh, cause you know, you want your subcontractors to be happy because they're, uh, the folks that are going to grow your business. So we try to spoil them every chance we get, you know? Um, uh, but, uh, you know, that way you feel confident when a job comes along thinking, okay, you look at your kind of list of subcontractors and about what they charge and say, okay, here's, here's my quote for this. And then you can go, you know, hit up your, your top three picks for, for this gig. Yeah. As far as paying subcontractors and rate, I'm glad you brought that up. I have a very, I have a limited history of subcontracting. I've done it a few times, but the one thing that I run into is that obviously I've put a lot of time and energy and anxiety into coming up with my own rate. And I know a lot of your videos say double your rate, see what happens, double your rate, see what happens. Um, how do you approach the moral ambiguity of paying yeah. someone less yeah. um, for something that you would charge more for? So it's, I mean, think of it, let's take freelancing out of the equation. Let's take ourselves out of the equation and think of any business on the planet, right? How does, how does Uber justify uh, taking money 
uh, from the driver. They, they're the ones that created the opportunity. They're the ones that right. are managing the relationship. They're the ones that have marketed it, that have put, you know, billions of dollars into R and D like that's the stuff that's, that's the trade-off. So it's your, you know, the, the person who manufactures the opportunity oftentimes gets paid more than, you know, and we try not to get paid more than our subcontractors. If anything, it's a split, but you know, the, like think of any, it's how does any company justify paying anybody that's working for them? any more any less than the 100 percent of the income that company's making right. it's like no you need you need a margin to grow a business you need you know and and if because i i've had i've had this one out a few times in in the dms when when i talk about subcontracting people uh you know will, will uh, reach out and they're never nasty about it but they can't quite you know or they they say you know uh why would you why would you pay me less than what you're making. And it's like, well, I asked how, how much do you normally charge for this, this amount? Okay. Like, how is it like, so you wouldn't have the job first off, I'm paying you right. your fee, you know, like, and, and in fact, I'm advocating, I'm trying to get you more than your fee. And it, regularly it happens where, you know, somebody will say, I had a buddy uh, who's doing, you know, voiceover work, uh, and, and he said that, uh, you know, he told me one number and I was like, that's, all right, let me see what I can do, you know, and I, and I went to the, to the client and I told him a number that was like 10 times what he said. And I came back, here's, here's this, here's this check, you know, like, oh, like, you, you know, you don't want to be, you know, uh, malicious about it. You, you don't want to be gleefully, you know, making profit off of somebody who doesn't understand what their value to a project is. Um, yeah. but you don't need to feel guilty about making a margin on, you know, as you're growing your business, because, uh, that client is there because of you. That client is there because of, you know, the years of work you've done to this point uh, is there because you've created the opportunity, um, you know, and and also you're you're managing the client relationship. You're, you know, uh, if you watch Mad Men, you're the Don Draper in this situation where you're you're the face, you're handling the client's expectations and you're managing the creative direction. And then, you know, he's got his team of, of artists and copywriters that are that are, you know, doing all, all the, all the kind of, uh, hand to hand combat on the project. Right. I, um, see in the chat, uh, Xavier is saying agency charges a million and there are a lot of baked costs within that budget. I remember when I worked for my old agency, um, I knew how much I made a year. And then I remember looking at my hourly rate for the breakdown of, uh, what we were charging clients. And I was like, this is outrageous. And I remember talking to an art director and being like, I can't believe it. Like they're paying me like so little for what they're charging for me. And then, you know, then I was kind of reminded of the space and the resources and the account team and all this other stuff that are all baked into that same cost. And, um, absolutely still having to become profitable from that as well. Um, now you have a studio with your wife. Um, obviously you're subcontracting for work with that. Um, are you normally extremely upfront with subcontractors or is it more of like, okay, you have hired us as the studio to tackle this problem. Um, no comment on subcontractors, just more so of like, we are producing what you're asking for. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, generally that's kind of the default for us is, um, you know, we're, we're not going to, uh, broadcast that, you know, it's, it's just assumed that, mm -hmm. that we've got it, that we've got a team. If we're asked, we don't, we don't, yeah, yeah. We've got a, a team of folks that we work with, you know, and, but we're always the face. We're always the people that, um, you know, our, our, our clients are dealing directly with. So, um, you know, it's not something that, or I guess I would say it's not something that we advertise again, like going back to the, you know, uh, uh, referencing any other company. It's, it's not something that needs to be said. It's, you know, Hey, we have other people that are helping us do this. It's like, yeah, right. Of, of course you do. You know, it's a, <laughs> it's not, a, it's not a bad thing. It's yeah. It's just, it sometimes it feels, it feels sketchy, even though like, yeah, to your point, just with any other business um, and hiring employees or, you know, just um, not W2s, uh, 1099 employees. Um, it's just a matter of like business and getting deliver things. You have more time to then also oversight for oversight 
And um, you also get to work with more people and give more opportunities. It's just one of those things that it, it, it's been hard for me. Like I said, I've only done it a very small amount of times. I'm inspired to do it more because um, of work increasing and uh, your videos. But it is just something that like it feels it's new territory. It feels, and, yeah. feels Any, weird. anything that you haven't done before is going to feel like that. Um, yeah. And, you know, I, it's also the process of kind of onboarding a subcontractor, like finding a team that you like working with is a little arduous. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, there are uncertainties that need to be tamed. Um, and, you know, oftentimes you kind of have to train them with, you know, to, to your process. But uh, the um, but yeah, I, I mean, I think that the, the key part for me or the best part for me about subcontracting is getting people paid. Like I love like hooking my friends up. I love hooking up, yes. you know, um, and and so it, it gets kind of addicting uh where you know like the story with with my buddy like you, you like you know you, you like to take the opportunities that that you have and kind of spread them around a little bit and um you know and then also free yourself up to kind of think a little longer term about about your business um and also like build uh those relationships with like your buddy for other experiences where they you're like, hey, this is actually something you can value your own worth at as advice and not even just coming from me. Here's money that makes it talk. And then two, um, future projects, you're, you're like, okay, cool. We can continue to work together. And you can see that I, I'm looking out for your best interest so you can trust me and, and know that I'm not um, just trying to take advantage of a easy situation. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Cool. Great. Well, that is the majority of my questions. Like I said, I do want to open up to the floor real quick because we have um, about 10 minutes left. Um, and I also am going to sneak in some of uh, more letters for the for the letter of the day. But I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to play two quick promo. Uh, oh, well, I'll, I'll put my subscription promo in there, too. Um, so, and I'll give you guys time to ask questions. I see one from Xavier. But um, make sure you guys throw it in the chat if you have any questions for Jamie um, before we sign off. So yeah, check this out. Join Cody Bear as she hosts Power Prompts in Evil March, Week Four, Apothecary Herbs, every Monday at two thirty Pacific, only on Adobe Live. Let's go Fresco with Kyle T. Webster Thursday mornings at seven thirty, only on Adobe Live. Sarah's here. Oh, Sarah, I get to play your thing. Here you go. back after the break um we got one very important question from reverb mike he says uh does he dance in his tiktok videos uh the internet will be happy to hear that i do not you, you should all be I grateful think about all the ones you could do where people are like <laughs> i was a musical theater kid yeah <laughs> were you really <laughs> yeah yeah really did you do it in high school I could, I could, I could tap dance if, if we got a full, if we had a full shot. You can shot, tap but, dance. Yeah. Well. Jamie Brindle, the tap dancer. Wow. Did not, it that's did not cool. guess that one. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, All right. I, yeah. I've turned off the light. We're in informal Q and A, Q and A setting. Oh, uh, you had a ring light going on? Yeah. Yeah. I was yeah, like, I, all right, I, enough, I enough of you. you. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm just sitting. There dark. we go. Now um, we're just chilling. Uh, and then Xavier is uh, also asking, he says, um, do you have a lot of contacts that you use for research? For research? Uh, interesting. I wonder in what in in what context, like for for our agency or for what do you think? Uh, I, I was assuming probably for projects and the, the back end of probably researching for um, a given product. But he can also see if he can clarify real quick. Um, and he also said it's also it's more important to also ask if he will question mark. <laughs> <Hello>. <laughs> um, 
but I'm assuming that it's probably um, uh, probably for the project. Uh, as we're waiting for his response, I see another one from Chris Crawford. He says, do you price your time differently if you are managing a project versus doing the work yourself without subcontractors? Uh, Chris, I never price my time. I, you know, it's, I, I price my value and, and I, I think that that's the key. You know, you should always, okay. I just saw Xavier's answer. Yeah. You should always be pricing your value to the project because, um, you know, uh, what's the old adage if, you know, there was like a, a an engine of a ship blew out and nobody knew how to fix it. And an engineer, they call in an engineer and he comes in and he tightens one screw and hands him a bill for $5,000. And they say, 5,000, you just had to tighten one screw. Can we get an itemized invoice? And, uh, you know, his, uh, his invoice was, you know, the, uh, or he replaced the screw. His invoice was uh, cost for replacing the screw, $2 and 35 cents or whatever, you know? Uh, and, and then the second light item was, uh, knowing which screw to replace $4,998. Yeah. And, yeah. Like, <laughs> and, and that's, that's a great way to kind of explain the difference in, uh, charging hourly versus charging for value. Um, another, another good, uh, analogy that, that I've used in the past is say you're called up this morning by your local cafe and they want a new poster for their window, uh, to try and, you know, help get folks, uh, off the sidewalk and into the cafe, um, you know, and then four hours later, Warner Brothers calls you and says they want a new poster. They want a poster for the new Batman movie. Um, it's the same job, but it's not the same price, right? Uh, it's not the same value because the cafe is going to be using your work to generate maybe an extra few thousand dollars in sales a month. Warner Brothers is going to use your work to generate an extra few hundred million dollars. Uh, you know, so you, you have to think about it and that it's what, what value do the bring, do you bring to the project? And as you get higher up in the kind of food chain of clients, uh, the more they understand that. So I know folks, folks, I know the, the kind of, uh, concern is how am I going to, how am I going to explain this to a client? They're going to find me out. They're going to hear that I charge this person this much for the same job. And, you know, but the higher up you go, uh, the more they're paying or, you know, security, they're, they're paying you for your expertise. They'll pay you whatever you tell them, uh, you know, just to get you on the job, uh, because they know they're not going to have to handhold you. And they know that you're going to, you're going to come out, you know, you're going to come out swinging and have a, a really good solution for them. So, uh, yeah, I, I don't price time price, price for value. And now you also, uh, you don't do hourly, you do, uh, daily. I don't even do daily. I don't even do daily. Oh, I thought you I did do daily. That. I don't know. Why. No, yeah. I think, uh, yeah, it's, I mean, there have been in like the past, like that for like film and TV, sometimes you have to put down a weekly rate, you know, like that's just how they're going to do it. Um, yeah. So, you know, I'll just take what my fee is and split it into however many weeks, you know, but. but yeah, the, the, but you know that on your end and, and yeah. your background. Yeah. Um, one that uh, there's lots of questions in debate. No one has, has strictly said it, but um, uh, how many how many pets do you have? <laughs> I have I have a dog right there. It's Watson. And uh, we have a cat named Phil who's like a it's it's a miracle that you guys saw her. She's usually she's she's a ghost cat. It's a white and black cat, right? Yeah. Yeah. And she, cool. uh, yeah. Yeah. But if yeah, she's 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 rarely out in the open. Oh, I mean, what a treat then. I guess guess she's a big <laughs> fan of Offset. Um, all right. And then the last one is just, I guess we'll just uh, just touch back again real quick on Xavier's for research for agencies, um, but open to anything. Do you normally have a research um, aspect to your projects? And do you um, like build for that and have that integrated? Um, or do you normally outsource for that? How does that normally work? So research for us, I mean, it's typically we're very collaborative. That's what we always, you know, we, we put on the Jersey of who, whoever our client is. And, and, uh, so usually, you know, it's, uh, we'll take their data, uh, you know, and ingest it on our end. It's, there's no, there's not really a fancy, uh, you know, research period built into our process. It's more like, you know, give us everything you got and, and, you know, we'll take a look at it and we'll parse out what's valuable to this project and what's not. Um, so yeah, we don't have uh, we don't have a team that does that. We don't outsource that to anybody. 
uh, but it could be different for different people's uh, services, you know. Um, and depending I, on the industry uh, that you're working with, like you might need a lot more research for some projects and some industries than other ones. I know we used to do pharma um, at my old agency for some stuff, and that research was way more heavy than when we were like, <laughs> you know, selling power bars. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. I mean, one one trick we'll use occasionally is we'll just get the you know the 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 person with uh, the the biggest title that we can get a hold of at the company to sit down for an hour and you know and we'll just chat and it's like we have a list of questions and we run them down. Um, but you know, it's uh, that's part of the fun of of freelancing is is the the amount of different industries that you get to. Uh, you get to learn about, right? And, and like low key become expert in like, we've got, you know, one of our best clients is one of, uh, so where do you even call him a client? He's a good friend of ours at this point, um, you know, runs an agency uh, that deals with um, a lot of cybersecurity companies. And, uh, and just over the last year or two, uh, you know, we no longer have to have these kind of uh, sit downs about, about uh, new projects because we've just now have a fundamental understanding of cybersecurity, you know? So yeah. it's, uh, it's, it's kind of fun. It's, it's, it's a fun part of the job. It's so funny. It's the funny things that you learn and you can randomly um, have conversations about at like a cocktail hour. Like, yeah. Oh, you must work in cybersecurity. And you're like, not really. <laughs> yeah. You see a guy like working all on the, about it. See a guy working on the telecommunications box, like on the side of the street and you're like, Oh, those are coax <laughs> cables. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> Um, okay. And then I actually just saw one more question. I promise this will be the last one. And Sam says, any primary tips for social media, things you found contributed most to your growth? I know you spoke a little bit earlier, um, about repurposing ones and having the data peer guide, but I wasn't sure if there was anything we didn't touch on that you wanted to bring up, uh, before we sign off. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think, um, and watching that first post of mine that you played, uh, is a great example. I was watching that and I'm thinking to myself, that's four reels. That's not one. That shouldn't be one. Yeah. You know, so that's the the first uh, lesson that I had to learn was, uh, you know, be cut down to the simplest version of the idea, because that's the language of social media today. Right. Get in and get out. Um, So if you have something that's got a lot of caveats and a lot of kind of different elements that you want to explore, you know, break that into many, many reels. Uh, If anything, you'll get more engagement because uh, people love to point out uh that stuff in the comments too i've always it's like you know you you post a 15 second reel about billing and somebody writes a paragraph that would take longer than 15 seconds to read that's like yeah but in this situation this would happen and you got to think about this situation too and it's like oh yeah like you know more on that later or go watch the other stuff i've got 15 seconds here to convey a thought you know so um that's that's big is just bake it down to the simplest version of the idea um and uh you can't you can't talk to everybody it's for creatives especially that's just that's painful like you you want to yeah. like you know you want to have uh for me early on the big debate was uh you know should we introduce some of the film and television stuff should it be me on set should it be me you know and it, it was just it's too much it's it's this guy you know is he giving advice for freelancers is he giving advice for film production is giving advice, you know, and, and so we just landed on, okay, we're just going to talk to freelancers and, and eventually, and, and now that, you know, people have an idea of who I am, I, you know, we might start introducing some of that stuff where it's, you kind of see me out in the wild, but um, yeah, I think those would be the two in addition to what we've already discussed. No, hundred um, percent. I think the idea of just like bite-sized content, I mean, even in like political debates and the presidential uh debates uh it's like you know 2016 2020 the thing that they kept saying is like the big thing is they don't really need to even answer the questions it just is a um a, a means of like getting the clip of getting yep. the, the this short thing that can then be reproduced over and over again it's like they've got a checklist to go, to go down they have an hour to it it, it, it sound bite bingo it's your reels it's your yeah. reels that you have your your little thing but it's yeah. uh it just happens to be the political discourse of a nation so <laughs> I think the, the the last key thing to think about when you're making content uh uh for your clients for instance if, if you're you know a freelancer is, is trying to make content for clients is you know you've you've niched down your focus you're focusing on one topic per 
you know, or you're, you, you know, you're covering one topic per reel. Um, you're, you're making each reel as valuable as possible. In, in terms of delivery, envision how the content is going to be ingested, right? So if yeah. you're making a YouTube video, oftentimes people have sat down in front of their computer to consume YouTube. So you can be a little more, you know, you, you can take, take a little more time getting to the meat uh, of the point. You know, you want to promise them what's coming up front and then get to the point. Um, if you're on TikTok or Instagram, you're hijacking attention. You don't have a captive audience. Uh, you're, you're trying to, uh, get the attention of somebody who's not, who, who's just, just killing time. Right. So you have to think about how you're delivering your content, whether it be YouTube, Reddit, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, medium, what have you that put yourself in the position of, okay, how do you ingest this content? What makes you stop the scroll? You know, what makes you click on something and then, and then, uh, tailor your approach to that. Reverb Mike says, keep it real. <laughs> Mike's all right. Well, Mike's been knocking him uh, out of the park all day. I know yeah. Mike is great. Mike's a, Mike's a motion guy. So, um, he, he definitely feel like you guys could talk. Uh, that's for awesome. While. Yeah. Um, he also always has a thousand quotes, uh, from movies that I'm always streaming and he's always bringing up movies Damn. that I've never seen. Yeah. Um, shoot me a DM, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so the last thing, yeah, I just gonna, I just want to show off you guys. Once again, you can get, uh, Jamie's stuff on jamiebrindle.io. That's where you can get his book for 25 bucks. Also, there's the add on of common email responses. Um, and, uh, yeah, no, it's been such a pleasure to talk to you. I know originally we were only going to have you on for an hour. You ended up sticking up for the, the whole two hours, which, um, is not unnoticed and, and it's so gracious of you. Thank you so much for spending time and talking through so much. I, I've learned so much just by having this interview. And I've also learned so much by watching you. Um, and you're very inspirational for um, business owners and freelancers. So thank you for really everything you do. Um, and uh, we hope to see more of you. Thanks, dude. I appreciate it. Let's let's do this again. And next time, next time, we'll get you some scotch so you can start working on that beard. Oh, yeah. No, I'm going to have to go work on those cigars and scotch for, uh, <laughs> to get it worked out. <laughs> um, and yeah, make sure you follow on the Jamie Brindle at Instagram and TikTok. Um, I see Sam's putting the things in the chat. Um, Thanks, Sam. But uh, anywhere else, uh, I think that's everything, right? Yeah, that covers it. I'm, I'm getting started on YouTube this year, but currently it's just it's just all that stuff getting dumped on YouTube. Yeah, no, that's going to be a whole other thing of reformatting from vertical to horizontal. They have yeah. bits and, and like sketches now i think it's just kind of like their stories but we'll see we'll see yeah it's gonna All be right. a, a new fun adventure well good luck and also good luck at a, a million it's gonna be great uh there's so <laughs> many things in the chat but we are gonna get cut off before i get to read through them because it automatically stops at like 26 and it's 25 so i'm gonna go ahead and roll the thanks for watching but right. thank you for being here see you um, buddy talk to you soon bye You're still here? It's over. Go home. Go.